to the many CPAs here who've helped me decipher the arcane corners of the tax code. Usually when I'm on deadline, panting, um, I'd like to thank you. Um, this is what I look like when I'm not on the phone. And this is what I look like when I'm not hyperventilating. So thank you all very much. And to my colleagues, the journalists who cover the Wild West, that is the financial world, I want to appreciate, I want to tell you that I appreciate uh, your guidance and inspiration by reading your work every day. Um, we're here to honor the contest winners, uh, people whose achievements uphold the highest standards of journalism. But every day in papers and blogs and on websites and in newsletters, um, the work you do helps people make sense of an increasingly complex world. And it helps them make decisions about their businesses, about their personal finances, about their families, about their children's futures, and it makes a difference. So I'm proud to be here among you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about my path into the world of business reporting because it's unusual. When people ask, how did you go from covering the NYPD to New Jersey politics to the US tax code, I have to smile and tell them, I owe it all to Elliot Spitzer's zipper problems. <laughs> True. Uh, I was in the newsroom in 2008 one day. I was covering as a Trenton bureau chief for the New York Times, and it was a few hours before uh, the Spitzer resignation, and um, we didn't know that yet. Uh, but because I covered Jim McGreevy and his fall from grace in Trenton a few years earlier, uh, the Metro editor turns to me and says, we need to go up in Albany. They got a McGreevy issue, only with girls this time. <laughs> And since a lot of you or most of you are from New York State, you may remember that when um, Spitzer was replaced by David Patterson at his first press conference, uh, he made the announcement that he too had had a number of extramarital affairs. Um, you know, so it was my job to go and find out whether any of those involved uh, people on the state payroll or misuse of the state function. Uh, the New York Times, happily, we don't have to write about it if it's it's just an affair, it's between him and his wife, but if it's a misuse of public money or public office, then it becomes an issue that we look at. So I went on a quest that was called the David Patterson Skirt Chase. <laughs> and I wish then that I knew the accounts that I know, I know now, because that number he talked about had a lot of digits in it. Um, you know, happily, I never found anything where he had misused his office, but it led me to Harlem. Um, to chase after some of it, and there is where I found uh, Charlie Rangel, who also lived in the same apartment building. Um, and it was Congressman Rangel who introduced me to the, the uh, muse and tormentor of so many people in this room, the U.S. tax code. Um, when I was looking for, Char for David Patterson's personal life, people said, you really ought to look into Rangel's apartments because he's got four rent control apartments that he's taking that's a violation of gift laws and um, so we looked into that and because he was chairman of Ways and Means that pretty soon led to me into the tax code. Um, if Congressman Rangel were here today I'd like to thank him for that introduction um, and the people of YouTube might also want to thank him because um, there's a video there of a press conference when I wrote about him where he says you're a moron. <laughs> and it's got a couple million hits, most of them from my own daughters. <laughs> it, it is a little odd that the tax code is what draw, drew me into financial reporting, or that I do financial reporting at all, because um, I became a journalist because it was the only major that allowed me to fulfill a math requirement um, with the courses Psychology 101 and Abnormal Psychology. <laughs> if anyone's ever been in a newsroom before, that's actually pretty big preparation. Um, but as I started working through the tax code, my fear of math abated because I realized that calculators did the, did the calculations. And my job was really to figure out the formulas and why they got the way they were, why were they so distended, and who benefited from it. Um, now, I'd like to have a word about the tax code with, with the accountants in the room. A word about the English language. Loss carry forwards. Grantor retained annuity trusts. Come on, people. Help us out here. I've always said in newsrooms that they should be run by the law. Uh, reporters don't let reporter friends do math. So I'm going to ask the accountants if they can adopt a rule that says accountants don't let accountant friends abuse English too much. Okay? Keep it simple. Um, all word nerdiness aside, I'd like to follow up on something that David said in his opening uh, remarks. I tend to write about the outliers, the people who are either abusing the tax code or pushing the envelope or trying to distend it to their own purposes. 
But the vast majority of people out there are people like you who are working to tell the truth and to get it right. Um, you know, you help businesses keep their money so they can invest and hire people. You help families make smart decisions. And I think as David said, we try to get, to get through the numbers to get to the truth. You also help reporters like me understand things like silo, lilo, and subpart after for all. So <laughs> thank you all. Uh, I'd also like to talk to the journalists in the room. You know, I said at the beginning that I'm proud to work with you and to stand among you because there's been so much incredible work being done. And as someone who only read the business pages casually until a couple years ago, I was stunned to just see the breadth and the depth and the quality of things that are being done. Um, when I looked at the award winners when Lois invited me, it, it was stunned, I was stunned because I'd read so many of the stories and was moved by them. Um, there were stories about um, you know, emerging businesses and the, the wonders of technology and, and uh, social networking. There was cautionary tales about mortgage swindlers and, and um, insider trading and child labor. And to me, as incredible as all that work is, it, it's even more remarkable because it's done at a time of great adversity and uncertainty in our business. Um, I would love to close these remarks by telling you that journalism is going to be fine and the rough patch that all our employers have gone through in the last couple of years will be over. But in a room full of people who know how to read a balance sheet <laughs> and who got to tell the truth, I, I can't say that. But I can offer encouragement because I feel that while our business is figuring out a new business model, the one clear thing that is, has come through is that quality content, quality journalism, the kind of work that you people have done every day is what is going to survive and thrive. So to the fellow journalists, I, I just would like to say congratulations on the work you did. And uh, in the end, it will be our salvation. Um, we have the audience, we have the mandate and the material um, all we have to do is kind of keep doing stories that make a difference, and I think we'll all thrive in the future. Thank you very much, and congratulations to the <coughs>